Welcome everyone, I'm Thomas and I'm here with Nate, Senior Product Marketing Manager at Microsoft. And we're going to talk about the Windows Server Extended Security Updates or ESU and the new options you have with Azure Arc. This is right in time of the uh, end of support for Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2. So I'm excited to have Nate here today um, uh, to talk about this. Um, before we dive into the extended security update options, uh, Nate, can you tell us a little bit more about Azure Arc for those who haven't heard about it yet and uh, what you can do, especially with Windows Server? Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Well, Azure Arc is one of our most exciting Azure services that we have, and, and most people know it as our you know, hybrid and multi-cloud offering that, that Microsoft has. So Azure Arc is a bridge that extends the Azure platform. So you can build applications and services with the flexibility to run them in data centers, uh, at the edge, and in multi-cloud environments. So Azure Arc provides a consistent development operations and security model for both new and existing applications. And many customers are using Azure Arc to uh, govern, secure, operate, and update their entire IT estate, their Windows servers, Linux servers, SQL servers, Kubernetes clusters, uh, wherever they are running. Maybe that's in a private data center, if you're in a regulated industry, or that could be in a retail store or a branch office or even a remote IoT or edge environment. So uh, Azure Arc is a, is a great tool that, that really just brings Azure services to your non-Azure environments. Fantastic, fantastic. And so um, before we talk about ESU and Azure Arc, uh, let's talk about like what extended security updates are and yeah. why they are now so important uh, right now. Yeah, well, Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 are reaching their end of support. So Microsoft officially supports these versions for 10 years. And now that we're reaching the end of support on October 10th, 2023, customers have a few options. They can, of course, upgrade their version of Windows Server to 2016 or 2019 or 2022. Then you can also migrate to Azure. If you migrate your Windows Server VMs to Azure, you get free extended security updates, or you could even modernize to PaaS, things like Azure App Service or Azure SQL Managed Instance for your SQL Server. But ESUs are extended security updates where if you want to stay on 2012 or 2012 R2, and you wanna stay on-prem in your current environment, you can purchase extended security updates from Microsoft and still get the critical and important security updates on you know, your regular Patch Tuesday or whenever these updates become uh, available. Awesome. And so extended security updates are obviously not something new in the Microsoft world. We offered them uh, a long time uh, ago for all the different Windows Server and SQL servers uh, and so on. But now we have something different. Now we offer extended security updates uh, together with Azure Arc. And maybe you can explain that a little bit and tell us the benefits of why customers probably want to um, deploy extended security updates uh, with Azure Arc. Yeah, well, there are some great benefits. As, as you all probably know, you purchase the old way with extended security updates through the Volume Licensing Service Center. You pay for one year at a time. Uh, and you basically pay up front and have to use them for that entire year. With extended security updates enabled by Azure Arc, you get to switch to a monthly billing process. And so you only pay monthly and for the months that you use. So if you only want to purchase ESUs for six months or nine months, you only need to pay for those six months or nine months before you either migrate or upgrade your Windows Server version, which is great. So we knew we have this new flexible billing model also, the ESUs enabled by Arc have seamless and automated patching because it's now an Azure service. You get all the benefits of Azure, not only basic benefits, things like role-based access control and tagging and, and resource groups and all of that, but you can do scheduling and automated patches through Azure Update Manager. And so you get all of these uh, great benefits and not even to mention things like better monitoring. And you can also use Azure Monitor or Microsoft Defender for Cloud and extend other security and management services. So you get the flexible and monthly billing, which you can upgrade or cancel at any time that you need. And then you also get uh, much better patching and automation. Uh, and those are some of the big benefits that we really see for ESUs enabled by Arc. 
Awesome. Thank you very much, Nate. And now we will take uh, it over to Arnoff, which shows us a quick demo how you actually can purchase and enable extended security updates for your Windows Server using Azure Arc. Arnoff, Thanks, take it away. Absolutely. Let's get started. So here we're going to show how you actually leverage Azure Arc to deploy your extended security updates for Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2. So started off here in Azure Portal in the Azure Arc landing page, and you can see how you can get started with ArcBox and add your Arc Infra. We assume that you've already deployed your on-prem or your multi-cloud Windows Server 2012 and 2012 R2 machines to Azure Arc deploying the connected machine agent and running our script. At that point, you're gonna see your machines come up within your Azure Arc portal view. Now today specifically, we're gonna be creating an extended security update license and then linking that license to our Arc enabled servers in order to enroll them in ESUs. The first step to this is gonna be provisioning an ESU license. So what all goes into an Arc ESU license? A couple of things. Obviously, an ARC ESU license is a name and an ARM resource. So we're going to start off and we're going to specify where it's going to land within our Azure subscription. Once I've specified where my license is going to be created, I give it a name. For example, we can call it the Mauer license given the show we're in. Next, we have the ability to activate now or activate later. If we activate now, we're going to get started to get built and we're going to immediately be able to enroll any linked servers into ESUs. If we choose to activate later, that gives us the flexibility where we can test now, for example, without triggering billing or ESU activation on the linked servers. This gives added flexibility, for example, if you have a procurement team that needs to do a sign off after the provisioning of ESUs to commence with billing. So now I've specified the name, I've specified the activation status in the region. I can choose between data center and standard and additionally, I have the flexibility to choose between a physical core and a virtual core model. Let's suppose here that I'm going to want a physical core based data center edition license. And with that license, I'm going to be subject to a minimum of 16 physical cores. Let's say I need about 32 cores in my specific instance for my environment. I've now specified that I want a 216 core pack, so 32 cores total, for a data center edition license that's licensed by physical cores and gonna be named the Mauer license. So I go ahead, I ensure that I have the necessary SA requirements or I'm running on an authorized mobility provider. And after that, I go ahead and click create. At this point, I've created my ESU license, the Mauer license. So you're probably thinking, Arnav, what if I wanna modify my license over time? You have the flexibility to do that you have the ability to change the number of cores associated with an ESU license. Another thing that's important to note is it's these ESU licenses that are actually tied to billing. So the activated ESU license, depending on the number of cores and its SKU, is what charges you. So now that I've provisioned an ESU license, I can go ahead and switch to my eligible resources tab. What Azure Arc does is it actually aggregates a view across your 2012 in 2012 R2 machines to ascertain its ESU status and where you have gaps in compliance. So for example, I noticed that this 2012 data center core server is missing ESU enrollment. What I can go ahead is select that server and then select enable ESUs. When I'm selecting ESUs, I have the flexibility to select for my physical core or virtual core based licenses. I can go ahead and I see that malware license that I initially provisioned. I can go ahead and click enable. What that's gonna do is it's going to enroll that ARC enabled server into extended security updates. And ultimately under the hood, this allows you to use any patching solution you want in order to deploy those ESU patches. Again, it's patch agnostic. Now that I've onboarded to the ESU offer, uh, my servers are securely protected uh, for six, for critical security patches. And I have free access to leverage additional Azure services, for example, uh, machine configuration, change tracking inventory, and update management, and no extra cost for those servers enrolled in ESUs. This is fantastic, Arnoff. This was a great uh, demo, and it seems to be super easy to actually 
uh, assign these ESU licenses to your Windows servers. So thank you very much uh, for this demo. Now, if our customers now want to learn more, uh, where can they go? Absolutely. Go to ak.ms slash arcesu to learn more and go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thank you very much, Arnoff. Uh, and thank you, everyone, watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about Azure Arc, follow the channel, subscribe, uh, and see you in the next one. Thank you.